All right, everyone. It is 29 April, 5 p.m., one hour after market close. And uh, this is a new daily uh, thing that I will be doing that if I make any kinds of credit spreads or debit spreads uh, in the day that I, that I put in for the Patreon members, um, I will go over all of those trades so that you got, you know, if you followed it, you know, that's on you. But at, at very least, I want you to learn the why behind the trade. And, and maybe you can ask me some questions. We'll look at technicals. These, these calls will never be over one hour. That's a hard stop is one hour. So don't worry. I won't blather on. Hello, King Ma. Welcome. Always joining. I appreciate Sorry, you dear. always joining. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so today is uh, April 29th uh, trades, okay? Um, I did three credit spreads and one debit spread, okay? We're going to go over the credit spreads first. So I did a Wells Fargo credit spread up here. Um, I did 25 contracts. Also, I wanted to clarify something. When I do this number, like 44 max gain, $56 max loss, that's per um credit spread um um contract pair so one contract each so you sell one and you buy one that's one contract credit spread i did 25 of them one of them on this credit spread can gain me 44 dollars in max gain 56 dollars in max loss all right and then i said i believe um wells fargo is headed down not up this play provides a high percentage return on risk. And that is because, remember, if the spread is $1, you see, I sold the 60 and bought the 61. That is a credit spread of $1. Of that $1, I received 44 cents, okay? 44 cents. That means there is how many cents left over that I can lose? That's 56 cents. So I can make 44 or I can lose 56. Now, when we use the, um, when we use the uh, uh, return on risk, right? I go right here to percentagecalculator.com. 44 is what, no, excuse me. Um, yeah, return on risk. So 44 is or is what percent of our, our, our risk, which is 56, right? Because the max that we can lose is 56 on this credit spread, but the max that we can gain is 44. That is a 78.57% per percent return possible on our risk. It's imperative that you understand you cannot lose more than $56. And if you are right, you will make $44. Now let's define what right is. Okay, when we go to Wells Fargo, let me find it up here. I'll just add it up. When we go to Wells Fargo, okay, um, and this is on the daily chart, Wells Fargo um, closed at $59.80, okay? Now, what, what did we do, right? We did, we sold, we sold, sell to open the 60 and buy to open the 25 call. Okay. So then when we go back over here, we have, we, Wells Fargo actually has to go up a little bit for us to be wrong. So on the expiration date of 61 right here, okay. On the expiration date, which is, I can't remember, um, which is not too far, 24 May, okay? So on the expiration date of 24 May, Wells Fargo has to be above this green line. So let's go to 24 May so that you way you guys know exactly when it is. 28 May, there it is, 24 May. 24 May. Wells Fargo, in order for us to lose money, because this is a bearish, this is a bear call spread. Wells Fargo on this day has to be above this green line for us to lose those um, $56. 
However, if Wells Fargo in or on May 24th is anywhere below $61, we make $44 per contract. And I did 25 of them. All right. So um, I have a max gain of $1,100 or a max loss of $1,400. Okay. And um, uh, I like the odds. See, we're playing the odds. Look, notice technically Wells Fargo is an over or it was overbought. It's near. I think I think banks are going to have a tough time when we look. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the in, into the technicals for Wells Fargo, but I do believe that Wells Fargo is about to finish or finalize its fifth wave. I do believe um, it's not going to be able to get up here. I think it's going to solidify. I think it's. I think this is the top. And I think now we're looking for the A wave. So it's going to go A, B, and then C. And it's going to start going down. Wells Fargo is going down. So all in all, that is the Wells Fargo trade. Okay, the Wells Fargo trade. And, you know, Captain D, I know you, you, you don't like to wait a long time. And, and that's fine. Um, but the, the Wells Fargo trade is, is only uh, till, till May 24th. <coughs> okay, another one I did today was NVIDIA. OK, um, this was a bull put spread. OK, I still and this is only May 31. So again, Captain D, this is uh, a month, right? 30, 30, 31 days. And what I did was is I sold the 760 and I bought the 755 put. Again, I did 25 contracts. Again, the max gain is 115 and the max loss is 385. And this had a 75 OTM percent. So um, according to the algorithm, this is 75% out of the money. And when I looked at the technicals, I think that um, Wells Fargo is, excuse me, not Wells Fargo, um, NVIDIA is actually more likely to either go sideways or up from here. Okay, so let's zoom. Let me show you why, right? Because the why is very important. So we had a double top. And sure enough, that double top did give us almost the entire move, the target move, right? But it didn't make the whole thing. It went down to 755. And then that's it. That The double top has come to fruition. And now we are going uh, into what is called, because that bottom solidified the fourth wave, we are going into the fifth and final wave. Now, if you know anything about Elliott wave, Elliott wave theory, um, Elliott wave theory says that the fifth wave can be either the same size or very rarely is it smaller. That's why it, it, it predicts that the, 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 the shortest fifth wave will be up here, but that's still bigger than the previous fourth wave. So the fifth wave is, is usually, but not always, more than the fourth wave, but hardly ever more than the third wave. So the third wave was NVIDIA, was this big boy over here. So long story short, with NVIDIA at on the daily, um, about, um, a, a, about fair value, I said, okay, the stock market is going to play its games, but I believe in 31 days that NVIDIA has a better chance of being up than it does down. But even so... Even so, I still was very conservative. And let me show you why. And this is why, um, the, 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 this is why, you know, information truly is king. Um, we know about Elliott Wave. I told you about the rules, right? For this particular trade, I sold the 760. So now when we look at NVIDIA, 760 is what? Why did I sell the 760? 760 is the fourth wave bottom. The odds of NVIDIA correcting down to 760 while it's in its fifth wave is very, very low. Nothing is impossible because fundamentals, um, they trump everything, everyone. But I don't believe that in the next um, 31 days will be a problem. Plus, if it shoots up, 
before earnings and I'm up over 50% on my credit spread with less than 50% of time left. So like in two weeks, if I am up over 50%, I'm going to close this trade. We do have earnings on May 22. So I would actually like to close this trade before May 22, which I think I will be able to. Okay. So that is the NVIDIA credit spread. Last but not least is the PAN W credit spread. Okay, yes, not only did I did I buy a debit spread on Pan W, but I also sold a credit spread. Now, the reason is its fundamentals, which we're going to go over in the next slide. But technically, right? Oh, that's NDX. Technically, I believe that Pan W will not go um, um, below to to um, 290. Uh, these are puts, right? So this is a bull put spread. So let's look at it. Pan W. There it is. Okay. So today we had a gap up and throughout the day, it actually gave all of it back. It still closed above Friday's close, which is bullish, but it gave on the daily, it gave most of it back. It was as high as 303, right? So that's 10 bucks. Now, 290 is uh, basically right here, right on. And what FIB level is this? This is the 61.8. If you guys remember anything I've taught you, there are three FIB levels, right? There are three FIB levels that are extremely um, high percentage of reversals. And the reason I said, and it's already started its reversal, but it started at the 78.6. So it did not start its reversal at the 61.8, which is why I like Pan W so much, because it already from up here, it dropped all the way down and found really, really good footing at the 200 SMA, which happens to co coincide with the 78.6 FIB level. Then it went up and then it went down. We didn't play it yet, or maybe we played it and then sold it um, close to this level. But I am now getting back in because look, it now retraced right back to the fib level and it broke the 200 sma for for a couple days what is it one two three four days it broke the 200 sma for four days but then went up and then it went up above the 21 ema then it came back down find support on the 200 sma again and then broke it up again and now we are starting to get some real power because what i want you guys to notice is this all right who can tell me what these look like I'll be very proud if you guys can tell me the word I'm looking for. I'll give you a hint. These are higher somethings. Higher lows. Exactly, Captain D. Good. Higher lows. Pan W is making higher lows on the daily, which is the most powerful um, um, time frame when you're looking for a longer type position. So I am confident that with these higher lows, right? And this very clear support at the 61.8 FIB level, plus the fundamentals I'm about to show you, that Pan W is going to stay above 290. So not only did I buy debit spreads, uh, I went over that over the on Sunday, but I also sold credit spreads because that's how um, right I think I am. Now, I could be all the way wrong if... Pan W does in fact break the 200 SMA and continue down. And if I lose a certain amount on my credit spread with a certain amount left, I will close it and take the loss. Um, so there's that. So the last part of, of, of these uh, credit spreads I want to show you, right, to, to further get you motivated on Pan W are the fundamentals. Okay, this is a, this is a snapshot of the fundamentals today from finviz.com, right? And, and uh, you know, you guys can see this. It has a price to sales of 12.59, which isn't great. Um, it has a, a price to book that really doesn't matter at this juncture. Um, but what it doesn't show, right? What it doesn't show is the growth percentage. So I manually found that. So if we look down here, we know that in 2023, Pan W was finally what? Positive. They are finally making a profit as of 2023, okay? 
they had from 2019 to 2020, a 17.6% growth in revenue. That is simply um, finding out the, the, the number from this number to this number, 2.9 billion to 3.41 billion. That is 17.6%. From 20 to 2021, 24.9%. From 21 to 22, 29.10%. And from 2022 to 2023, a 25%, 25.28%. So we have what we like, which is continuous growth we are now um, positive in revenue. So if we continue to grow and have achieved um, and have achieved um, uh, profit, do you think they're going to be not profitable in 2024? I highly doubt it. Now, if you go from 2019 to 2023, they have achieved 138 percent growth, which means they grew from. $2.9 billion of revenue in 2019 to 6.89% or excuse me, not percent from $6.89 billion in revenue in 2023. And that is 138% of growth in those um, four years. Now, when I couple the technical and the fundamental, and then I look at what kind of company Pan W is, which is one of my favorite um, types of companies right now because it's basically cybersecurity, which is only getting more complex and is only getting more needed. I think that this company will, will grow. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but another um, company that does this that I used to like a lot, but they, I think they just got too, um, too, too big too fast, and they scared me away, to be honest with you, is CloudStrike or CrowdStrike. So these are the fundamentals of CrowdStrike. And in 2024, CrowdStrike just barely became per share profitable. And they have much, they have better, um, they have better growth percentages. However, look at their income. They're a 70, basically $74 billion company um, um, that's only pulling in 89 million. All right. Pan Pan W is a 94 per, um, um, billion dollar company, which is more, right? But look how many, look how much more income they have. They're pulling in 2.28 billion. 2.28 billion is over 20 times more than 89 million. So, um, and, okay, and look at their PE. Their PE is 837. That's just freaking nuts. I can't, I'm not saying they're a great company. I'm not saying they're not going to grow, but I do think they're going to take a hit because I do think that they are a little bit overpriced, but I, I could be wrong, right? And I'm, I'm talking about fundamentals only. So because of that, I much rather um, do these plays on Pan W, which has a PE of 45.87, which is not like before 2023, they didn't have a PE ratio because they weren't profitable, right? Um, I don't think that this forward PE is accurate. I think I think they um, I th I think their forward guidance on their last earnings calls was sandbagging, and um, I think they I think there's a lot of upside in Pan W. So with all that said, guys, that's why I made the Pan W um, trades that I did today. Last but not least, we're going to go over the one and only debit spread um, that I did today. And that was on the NDX. Remember, the NDX is just like the Qs, um, except, except it's, a, it's a 1546 contract. And that just means it's the gains are taxed better at the end of the year. So um, on this one, because I do believe that the market um, is, is going down, Right, uh, it, it, it's a it's it's a great risk to reward play. Okay, um, I did ten of them, but on just one, okay, um, I can either have a max loss of three hundred and sixty five, or I can make a max gain of uh, two thousand one hundred and thirty five. So um, I sold the okay. So I bought the sixteen eight hundred, and it expires on May thirty first. So let's go to the charts. Okay, 
so 16800 I believe yeah it's right here okay and May 31st so let's go to 16800 right there close enough and then go all the way down to to May 31st okay there it is so I need, in order to be correct, um, I need the S&P to go down, or not S&P, excuse me, the NASDAQ, the NDX. I need it to go down 5.54% in the next 32 days. Okay, um, according to my... Elliott wave theory guesses. Remember, we haven't locked in A yet. We could still, this, I could lose money on this because I will close this out at a loss if the next couple of days are up because then there's no point in me holding on to this because not only is the market going up, but my days are getting lower. So unless I, unless I'll give it two to, basically this week. If this week, if I am wrong and the market starts to creep up, I will close it out at a loss, right? But again, it's not, it's a debit spread. So the risk isn't crazy. I only risk $365 to make $2,135, but um, I actually did 10 of them. So 365 times 10 is uh, 3,650. That's what I paid today. Um, but I could make, I could make, if I'm right, $2,100. Right. If 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 I am right now, um, I believe that the OTM percent. Let me look. I'll look at it for you right now. What is the OTM percent? Uh, for May thirty first. Yes. Okay. The o the o the out of the money percentage is right at eighty four percent. Um, eighty. There's an eighty. According to the, you know, the the chance that is right, seventy percent of the time, um, I am eighty four percent chance that I'm not that the market is not going to drop down that much. So we'll see. Um, I will let you guys. You'll know if the market goes up in the next couple of days that I was wrong, or at least in my opinion, I'm wrong, and I'm going to salvage as much as I can of this three hundred three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. So um, yeah, everyone. Those were all the trades. Before we go into the last thing, which is look at the NASDAQ 100, are there any questions on any trade that I made today? Here are the credit spreads, and here are is the debit spreads. Any questions? Nope, not for me. It's all good. Okay. All right. Well, I got, to... I got a general question. Sure, go ahead. How do you how do you choose your expiration dates? Uh, that it depends on my thesis, right? It it, it it depends on if it's on an individual stock, is earnings coming up anytime? That also makes me pick: am I buying or am I selling? Right? Um, so mm -hmm. it, it, it's 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 it, I can't tell you how to do that. It's it, that's an individual thing. Uh, I look I look at I remember. Just because I'm writing a credit spread when I do do credit spreads doesn't mean that I have to hold it the entire time. We, we just went over this on Sunday, King Ma. Like if I am up over 50% of the premium received on a credit spread and it has more than 50% of time left in it, meaning if I did a 30-day credit spread and in one week I'm up 50%, I'm closing that credit spread. That way there's 0% chance of it going against me. I'm happy with 50%. I'll find another good setup. Okay. Got it. Okay, last but not least, we're going to talk about the NASDAQ 100. I kind of alluded to it, but I'll tell you again. So what I think is happening, I think the most bullish case scenario is that the NASDAQ can go up to around, you know, eight, uh, 17,900 uh, or some change. I think it'll, I think this 50 SMA will be a very staunch resistance. I do not think that the NASDAQ 100 will be able to break above this 50 SMA. So that's what I am going to look at in, in this week. If it does tomorrow, 
I'm closing out my my bearish plays, all of them, all the bearish plays that I have on the NASDAQ 100 and on, on other individual stocks as well. Um, you might have noticed that I have bullish plays on some stock whilst I am bearish on the market. And that is true because, um, I, I, you know, the worst thing that you can do, like, I don't know if you guys remember the Lulu trade, I'm very proud of the Lulu trade, the Lulu trade. When the, when the, the, when the market was going down on April 15th, and I can prove it to you, look, April 15th, right here, April 15th is this candle. The market broke out of broke out of its um, long term um, rising wedge, and 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 this was actually a a, a, a very uh, red day. It, it 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 broke below and stayed below the twenty one EMA, and and then continued to go down. But what was Lulu doing? Well, Lulu because it had earnings and just did apparently so bad and broke below major support lines what did i do i think some of you in here followed that trade and you made money quick because we were in and out of that trade in a couple of days and i said i am pause i am bullish on lulu and what did it do it went up literally from the bottom from the bottom it went up 11 percent where well our trades were credit spreads i believe i think i did have one debit spread but those credit spreads were quickly in excess of 50% gain in a very short amount of time. So you were able to close it out. So um, individual stocks don't have to follow the market exactly, right? Everything is, is different. So the individual stocks that I am bullish on right now is, is um, NVIDIA, Palantir. Haven't made any trades today on Palantir, but that's because I already have a lot. But I am very bullish on Palantir. I believe Palantir is, is also about to make its fifth wave. As you can see, its fourth wave was solidified. Um, and um, um, Pan W. All right. Those are the ones that I am bullish on. Uh, well, everyone, that concludes today's um, Patreon session. I'm going to stop the recording. And then, you know, any questions you guys may have, you can ask me offline right now. Thanks for coming. And I will upload this to Patreon. And I'm actually going to upload this to YouTube too, um, um, so because for for people to know, uh, this is a new series I'm going to do daily. But it's going to be for Patreon members live, like you only. And it's plus it's after the fact, so they don't get to see when I made the play.